So before I show you how to fly the circuit, I'm just going to go over a review of what the circuit is. All right, so here is a diagram of the circuit. All right, so you have your runway, you have your little pattern here. So the assignment for you is we're taking off from Brampton, so CNC3 on runway 33, and we're going to do a left-hand circuit and land, all right? Now, for the class, you have to make sure that your um, for your downward leg, your vertical deviation, so like your altitude, has to be within the proper altitude, plus or minus 200 feet, all right? As well as you're going to be flying calm weather, so no winds, which is great, um, but of course, you're not allowed to use any autopilot or you're not allowed to use the map. All right. So this is all going to be you. Now, the thing with the circuit is that we're doing the left hand. So we're going to be going over the numbers for this circuit because you guys aren't training them to be pilots. Thank goodness, because this is going to make it a lot easier because if you're training to be a pilot, you'd have to worry about each and every airfield. But since we're learning about this specific airport, you can memorize these numbers and you're actually allowed to bring in a cheat sheet to your class. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So as you know, the altitudes are pretty much 500, 1,000, 1,500 and land. All right. So knowing this and the airport's around 900 feet above uh, sea level um, at 1,400 feet. So it's going to read on your altimeter. 1,400 feet is 500 feet. All right. So as soon as you reach that after takeoff, that's when you want to turn left to your crosswind, all right? And since your heading right now is 330, you can just subtract 90 degrees, it's 270, all right? So that's your heading. Um, after that, you make it all the way over to when you can turn on to your downwind. Once again, you just add another 500 feet to 1400, which is going to give you 1900 on your altimeter. That is going to be, of course, your awesome 1000 feet that you're looking for. Um, with a heading of 150, all right? After that, you can head all the way down to your uh, base leg where you can turn 060, um, and that's where you start to descend from uh, 1,000 feet down to 500 feet again. And, of course, last but not least, you got your final starting off at 500 feet or reading on your altimeter, 1,400 with your heading of 330, and from then on in, it's all visual, all right? So you shouldn't have to worry about your instruments after that. So let's dive into X-Plane and take a quick look at what you have to do. All right, awesome. So here we are in the uh, Cessna, and we're just taking off now. So again, um, with the controllers at the school, it's going to be a little bit hard. But of course, um, use your your uh, heading indicator there to keep straight for uh, 3 3 um, as well as wait till uh, around 44 knots or the green arc till you start to pull back, all right? So now that you're in the air, try to keep your speed at around 70 knots, all right? And since you can't see the ground anymore, use your, um, again, heading indicator to keep 330, okay? Because, of course, um, you're in a calm setting. You don't have to worry about wind. And, of course, you're at full power, okay? So your throttle's all the way in. Okay, so if we're paying attention to our altimeter now, um, we can see that we're going to be, there we are, 500 feet, so 1,400, we're going, and um, we are looking for that 240 mark for a heading indicator, okay? Um, you can use that uh, horizontal horizon or the turn bay coordinator there to have a nice level turn, because if you keep it consistent, it'll keep your circuit square all right so it'll make your circuit a lot neater so use those tools to keep it good um there you go 1000 feet above ground level 1900 so we can turn our downwind now <clears throat> pardon me um so here we go all right so we're turning our downwind um we're once again looking for our heading of 150 and since we're at our altitude you saw there are for the rpm gauge you can throttle back um a good RPM is around 21 to 2200 RPM there. And it'll just be below 100 knots if you look at the ASI. And of course, there we are. We're on our 150 heading there. So we're on our downwind leg. We're looking good. We got the airport to our left. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Keep an eye on your uh, instruments. If this was real life, you would be doing your downwind checks. All right. And of course, it's a beautiful day. 
And like you just saw right there, halfway through the strut, it is a great place to be, which means that your distance from the airport is looking good. Um, at this point, uh, we are past the beam, and we're going to wait for the 45 degree mark, all right, from the runway. So if you draw a line through the runway, so through 3-3, um, and a beam, so like halfway through our downwind is 90 degrees. So if you draw a line out 45 degrees from the runway, that's when you pretty much want to turn your base. All right. Um, so press Q to look back and of course E to look back to the front. Um, and we're always looking back, keeping an eye. There you go. We saw that 45 degrees. So now we can turn. And this is where you can throttle back around 1600 RPM there because we're descending. So we should start to see our altitude go. Um, that white arc, that means you can deploy your flaps. All right, I suggest at least 10 degrees there. Um, once again, depending on the weather, but of course this is total VFR, no winds, everything else, all right? So we're turning on to our um, last heading here, as well as we're still descending down to 500 feet. So on the altimeter, it's gonna read 1,400, so we're almost there. And I did something here that's really quite interesting and may happen to you a lot. So let's say um, I turned a little bit early here. So we're just now reaching 500 feet. But if we're, um, see, I turned a little bit too late here. And this is going to happen to you. It's okay. Um, you don't have to restart. You just make the best of it. All right. So slightly crab in there. Just pretty much watch what I'm doing here. And from now on in, you can pretty much just use visual all right, you don't have to read your instruments. Um, just fly right in. And once again, you don't technically have to land. You can pause it with the P button uh, when you're around 50 feet above the ground. All right, Derek's going to let you do that. Um, if you want, you can try to land. It's your choice. But um, again, when you're uh, just around... Uh, I did have 50 feet early, so that's P. Once again, you can pause it right now, and then you can be done. Um, but if you want to be a hot shot, you can keep on going and you can try to land yourself. Um, that's what I did because I'm a total keener about this stuff. And of course, um, you're coming in for landing if you're continuing to play the sim now. And look at, don't forget to flare. And then, of course, you just bleed off that axis airspeed there and let your wheels touch the ground. And then, boop, there you are. Gently nose down, there you are. The brakes are on, the flaps are up, you're good to go. Look at that, a nice safe flight, and you have just gotten an A+, plus. all right? Now, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me at henrybaileybrown at gmail.com, all right? And if we look at our post-flight here on the, under the map, so you saw the tabs there, it was a nice square circuit. Oh, we'll just make it a, it's a little bit easier if you don't see the sectional, but I'll just do this for YouTube. So there you go. So we had a pretty square circuit. If you look at our slope tab up there, we can see that it was really decent. You know, we stayed in within even 100 feet, you know, of uh, the 1,000 feet. So once again, um, if you have any questions, ask me. Let me know if I need to clarify anything. And there you go. You guys can do this. It just takes practice. All right. That's all it is. And you can make a wonderful little squiggly line like this. All right. Um, so yeah, that's all it takes to fly the circuit. And there you go. All right. Again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks again for taking the time for this video and have a great day.